Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ballet at Brand. Hope the uh, the audio is a little bit better. I've taken some recommendations and, and moved the mic a little bit closer, or a little bit further away from my face. So I want this video to be pretty concise and, and just something that I've heard Funding Jim talk about. Um, I know it was kind of like an epiphany for Richard Hart when Funding Jim had mentioned it to him. And then also uh, Ruth, uh, a developer, a wonderful developer, had mentioned one time in the, the voice chat, the Pulse Chain Com hexradio.app voice chat, that there's a couple of different ways of handling the liquidity side and handling what to do once you do get your once you do get your copy, right? Because for everyone that has hex, say liquid hex, well now that's on the Ethereum blockchain. But once the fork happens, the hard fork happens, now that's going to be copied over as you know hex on the Pulse Chain network. And what are you going to do with these two these two copies? Um, I mean, arguably, not even arguably, but it is the the same exact contract uh, code and the same exact uh, smart contract as is on Ethereum, but just getting copied over to a faster, cheaper, you know, probably more secure blockchain. So I hear a lot of speculation. Um, you know, I've heard from Crypto Sparbuch that they are going to, at least from what they've talked about in the past, I've seen that they are going to uh, sell their eHex, right? Um, in return for Pulse Chain Hex, which is just Hex now. And then, uh, they're going to pretty much keep a majority of their bag on the hex on pulse chain side of things. Now, I was initially thinking that this was going to be a very popular strategy. And who knows? It, it still might, right? But what people risk is, you know, when something sells off, that's usually when uh, whales, uh, they're, they're the, the biggest biggest you know fish in the ocean right the the whales tend to open their mouth and and swallow all the krill or swallow all of the uh the, the cheap prices right they can accumulate the cheap prices in like one big bang and so the the point that i'm getting to after two minutes and 33 seconds is the actual fork of uniswap is something that's coming over but there's also going to be a fork of of uh what is it called pancake swap which is something that's on Binance Smart Chain uh, currently. And that was originally a fork of Uniswap. But the thing that the pancake swap has and the thing that the pulse swap does have and that it will have in the future, which is what this video is about, is it's going to give you a like a governance token, right? Similar to the cake on Binance Smart Chain or on pancake swap, I mean, or similar to like Uni um, on, on Uniswap. And Instead of selling one side versus the other, what you can do, since I personally think we will see parity eventually, I don't know how long that'll take, but I do know Richard talked about if, if someone, who knows who it is, but if someone happened to say double the side of the USDC liquidity, right, to where it could kind of handle some of that sell pressure, if someone could double that side of the liquidity and once the actual trading opened up, it was pretty much at parity. Then what you could do, the strategy is taking your hex, which is now hex on pulse chain, and your e-hex, and you're putting that into the pulse swap, uh, you know, liquidity providing like yield farming platform. And Ruth and I have, have talked a little bit about this because I wanted to make a clip of, of their audio chat. Um, but obviously didn't want anything to be misconstrued or, or misunderstood. Uh, so this is just kind of um, a bird's eye view of some of the information that I've seen and that I kind of understand. But instead of once again, selling off everything on say eHex and just expecting everything to pump on, on Hex on Pulse Chain, well now you've got more than one option. And for me, I'm already set, thankfully, uh, you know, two hacks and I don't need to sell off one for the other. And in fact, that's a very risky decision because you never know what's going to, uh, over the long term, you never know what's going to accrue the most value and what whale decides to make that more valuable than say the other chain. 
And if you had happened to make a decision that was very risky of like all or nothing, right? Uh, all of one side versus the other, then you kind of shoot yourself in the foot speculating. And in reality, for me, I'm just taking the safer position of just holding both sides and I'm happy with both sides, right? And so the point is this, when you put in that E hex and that P hex, we'll call it, you're going to get that third token that Richard talks about. And it is the, the pulse swap token, things like that. Okay, so let me share the screen here. These are a couple of photos that, uh, that Ruth has sent me, a couple uh, you know, Microsoft Paint drawings. And, and once again, none of this is a representation of what Ruth has said. Um, you know, her and I have talked a, a couple of times and before I was going to make the clip, I had realized, okay, I don't want to do it out of context. Let me just see if I can explain some of it myself without once again, having a, you know, miscommunication or misunderstanding of what they were saying. So this is kind of just my stab at it. Once again, like a bird's eye view. Okay. So let me go over to the share screen here. Okay. So you can see PHEX T share price and then the pull swap price. And what Ruth is, uh, you know, from what it seems like, the actual value of getting in something at the very ground floor, which would be that pull swap, is absolutely immense, right? Because you're going to have both sides of P hex and E hex. That's great. They're going to have their value discovery. But to get into something like Uniswap or to getting to something like Cake, right? You know, for the pancake swap uh, at the very ground floor and you're earning it for free because now you have both sides of the of the liquidity that you're supplying. Uh, that seemed like a very uh, possibly lucrative. Let me zoom in, zoom in a little bit more. Um, that seemed like a very possibly uh, more lucrative route than just selling all of your e hex. Maybe the p hex price pumps a little bit, but now you don't have that liquidity. Now you don't have that p uh, that pulse swap, you know, governance token. And what we've seen in the past is once again, if you could have gotten into hex or pulse chain or any other coin, name your coin. Um, at the very ground floor, well, now the amount of growth that it can do and the amount of X's that it can do is is to the limit, you know, it's to the limit of the sky. So here's what some of the photos that they had sent me in drawing. So this is the window. Uh, this window is uh, is minutes or hours, maybe days. And so what this is talking about is once that actual, you know, once the the fork itself happens, once the main net itself opens up for, for trading. And then also once people can provide the liquidity on both sides and start earning that pulse swap token. Okay, we're gonna scroll down a little bit here. So this is the time window of applicability. It says anywhere to, uh, to months is kind of the, the time frame. Let me zoom in just a little bit more. Okay, so the difference is not so much in behavior, but rather in magnitude, very profound. So PHEX will go from zero to somewhere south of $1 during this window. Uh, pull swap token will go far, far north of $1 while you sit and watch or dump your PHEX to get some of that action when you could have been earning it without dumping any of your assets just by chilling with them in a liquidity pool. So once again, those are Ruth's words to me and... Uh, once again, this is just my interpretation of what this means. So that's uh, that's really cool, right? Instead of selling your eHex and then buying this new pulse swap token as it starts to pump, why not keep your eHex? Why not keep your PHEX, right? Your your hex on pulse chain, and then earn the damn pulse swap token for free. Seems like a genius idea to me. And also, it's also being like uh, it's almost it's almost like doing limit orders where you're being a good uh, community member and participant versus just dumping one side of the, the chain and, and the coins. Let me zoom out just a little bit here. Okay, so the rate of change of the pull swap price, and you can see this is a very sharp, um, very aggressive curve over a short period of time from the, the previous uh, chart uh, table that they had sent me. It looks like that time could be months for, for when that absolute value discovery does happen. 
once again, if you could have gotten in that Bitcoin at sub penny or even one penny, it had a very similar arc as well, where it's just very quick and rapid. And then it kind of, you know, uh, the, the curve itself gets less aggressive as the time goes on and as more money and liquidity get into that pricing. Okay, so the profit, once again, is right here, is kind of being that liquidity, supplying that, and then earning the free token, which is really cool. Like, uh, free is obviously something that everyone loves. And if you already are content with your bag and you don't have to do anything that's more of a higher risk, in my opinion, then this is really the, uh, in my opinion, this is like the, the safest route to go. Sure, you can delegate your pulse. Uh, that's even something completely different than what this is, right? This is for hexagons or I guess anyone, right, that has a ERC-20 token pair that's going to be popular. So you're going to get that other copy of that chain. And then now you can supply that liquidity, which benefits everyone, right? And then you're also going to get the other token, the pull swap token. So the rate of change of PHEX T-share price. Okay, and then this is the, the very last one here. Let me, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll just read these two uh, scenarios, right? And then honestly, as far as this, uh, you know, stop liquidity providing at the point of parity to guarantee zero and permanent loss, this is something that you can just pause and, and look at yourself, right? But I just want to cover some of the text and then whoever wants to make their interpretations of however you want, that's up to you. That's your prerogative. Okay, so Root says, and let me just zoom in here. It's so much easier for me to read. So if you hold an unbalanced position, you can fail to maximize government or yeah, governance token earnings when near parity exists, immediately when critical mass ado uh, adoption assumption applies. And then it says, uh, have noted in private chats outside of discussion that this is a dynamical system approximated by non-linear ODEs, uh, so not always possible to predict. Very cool. And then it's saying scenario two, without this assumption, easy to reach, uh, easy to reach with some whales, by the way, arbitragers may win, but impermanent loss doesn't need to be realized, and a new governance token often outpaces losses between two tokens that don't vary widely in value for long. And then uh, let's scroll over here a smidge. So under, and they've got this box, right? So clearly it's important. Uh, under critical mass adoption assumption, price parity is reached, so in the limit. Uh, expected value equals $30 plus the governance token. So yeah, once again, that's some of the, uh, some of the information that, uh, that Ruth had sent to me and further clarifying their, uh, their voice chat that they did the other day. Um, once again, this isn't Ruth's words or anything like that. This is just some of my interpretation from someone that's not a developer, uh, but also from someone that understands how liquidity providing works. And the thing that I've learned in Hex and in crypto is you don't really have to make those high risk and almost gambling speculating and speculating uh, decisions to be successful, right? Um, it's usually the time in the market and kind of just being calm while everyone's panicking that allows you to be successful. And you're going to see once again, once that uh, the hard fork happens, once people get their chain, their, their coins on the main net, right? You're going to see a whole bunch of frantic, a whole bunch of uh, shenanigans, right? Uh, people trading from this one to that one, selling all their PHEX to go to EHEX, selling all their EHEX to go to HEX on Pulse Chain. And for me, you know, I'm just going to be sitting back, smoking a cigar, obviously joking, but sitting back, you know, casually just on the porch while you're watching uh, a riot happen and while you're watching everyone making these frantic, uh, quick emotional decisions, not to mention once that price starts fluctuating because of people trading back and forth, people tend to make um, not very calculated decisions when they're thinking with their emotions versus the logic itself. So I'm encouraging people to consider this as an option, right? Just like you can 
uh, delegate your pulse chain versus versus selling it, or you know you can earn income passively there. Who knows what the actual APY and the yield's going to be? But that's one way of generating revenue and generating more pulse. But then same thing with this. Instead of going all one or the other and kind of being like, because now you're going to be like an e-hex maximalist or you know a hex on pull chain maximalist if you do that. Uh, we see that people that sell their bags, they always talk crap about it because now they don't have a stake in the game. But why not take the absolute hedge, which is do nothing with both sides other than putting them into the liquidity, earning that uh, pull swap token, and then watching that because the pull swap token is going to be very, very valuable. When I'd gotten the Uniswap airdrop a couple of wallets worth, um, I had sold it immediately thinking that the price was going to dump. And it actually turned out to do the opposite because of its utility and because of you know more of that adoption and kind of a price movement happening. So that's the same thing that's most likely going to happen with Pulse. It's a decision that I'm going to make. And at the end of the day, there really is a lot of ways that people can tackle this. And I'm not ever recommending you know, financial advice or people do this or that. All I'm ever saying is considerations that I've heard, uh, things that I may or may not be doing, and just sharing it with you, the audience, and just letting you know that, hey, maybe you haven't heard of this option before, this possibility. Well, now instead of thinking um, binarily, you know, one or two, or one or zero, I should say, now, hey, guess what? There is that two. There is that third option that no one saw. They were just looking at the two sides of the coin as opposed to the third side of the coin, which is the uh, the edge, right? So that's all I have for this one. I know it's a little bit longer of a video. Um, hope the audio is sounding a little bit better. Once again, none of this is information that Ruth is saying. This is just some of my interpretation from uh, you know a couple of chats that I've had with Ruth uh, back and forth. So thank you everyone. I hope this uh, provided some value if it did. Feel free to like the video, right? Um, go check out my uh, my second channel in the YouTube description solely for SciVive, for self help. You know, um, you know, mental and physical health on top of financial wealth. So I'll see everyone on the next one, and uh, thank you again.